question 11 is um, a circles question and part A starts off quite nice. So I need the center and the radius of the circle and I've got the, the equation of the circle in expanded form. So first thing I'm going to do is write my x squared and x terms together and my y squared and y terms together. I'm not bothered about the 9 so I'll just leave that there for now. And then I need to complete the square. So I'm going to halve the, the coefficient of x and then I need to subtract 3 squared. I'm going to halve the coefficient of the 10y and then subtract 5 squared and then take the constants all over the right hand side because that will give me the radius. So minus 9 plus 9 minus 25 is minus 25 so if I add over um, that will just equal 25. So the center is at minus 3, sorry, ignore me, is at 3, minus 5, so the opposite sign of what's in the, the brackets there. So 3 minus 5, and the radius is 5. Yeah, that gives me r squared. Okay, right, so then the second part is, is definitely a lot more challenging. Um, so we have got a circle. So I'm just—I'm not even going to you know, worry about sketching accurately. I'm just going to draw a circle so I can get my head around what's going on. And then the line y equals kx, so that's just a straight line, cuts it at two points. Um, and then find the range of values for k. So any any question that's talking about um, the number of intersections or um, the number of roots is is going to be to do with discriminant. Okay, so. It has two distinct points, so when I try and solve these equations, it has two solutions. So I'm going to be looking for the discriminant to be greater than zero, but we'll, we'll get on to that. Okay, so well, what would you do if you were trying to find where a straight line and a circle cross? You'd, you'd substitute the straight line into the equation of the circle. So and we've actually got two versions um, of the circle equation. You've got your completed square one um, there, and we've got the original expanded one. It doesn't matter which you use. Um, the benefit of using the original one is you know there's no errors there. So if you've had a bit of a funny moment and made a slip on part A, it won't then affect your answer to part B. The benefit of using this version is Y only appears once. But we're then going to have to expand the brackets out anyway. So I think it probably makes sense to, to go for this one. So your first mark comes from substituting KX in for Y. So where it says Y squared it's kx squared, where it says 10y, it's 10 times kx, and then plus 9 is 0. Okay, so there's your first mark. Um, your second mark is going to come from simplifying that to, to what they call a three-term quadratic. So it, it is a quadratic, the highest um, power is x squared, and it, there's a, an x term and a, a constant. But to be able to start looking at the discriminant, I need it rewritten um, clearly it's just three terms. So what they mean by that is, there's my x squared term. So I'm just going to multiply out those brackets just to be really clear. So if I want just to have my x squared as a single term, I'll make that k a little bit neater, let's try that again, um, then I need to take x squared out as a common factor of those two terms because what that is going to do for me is when I come onto the discriminant I can see that a for the coefficient of x squared is 1 plus k squared right so then I've got my x terms so it's minus x plus 10 kx and the same thing again basically you want to take x out as a common factor and I just need to be careful here because obviously I've got a negative and a positive so I think the, the easiest thing to do there is to say it's plus 10k minus 6. Okay, so you should be able to check that they are, are the same, um, whether they're expanded or factorised, and then at least c on the end is nice, that's just plus 9. So by writing it like that, so that's what they mean by three-term quadratic, I can just really clearly see the coefficient of x squared is 1 plus k squared, the coefficient of b is 10k minus 6, and c is 9. Right. And what we're saying, 
So if it cuts at two distinct points, we're basically saying that this quadratic has two solutions. And for a quadratic to have two solutions, the discriminant must be greater than zero. So I'll change colour here just so it's clear that I'm, cause this is going to give me another quadratic, but this one's going to be a quadratic in K rather than a quadratic in X. So B squared minus 4 times A times C must be greater than 0. Okay, so let's get all this tidied up and then solve that quadratic and then we're away. Um, so, if I multiply those brackets now, I'm going to have 100k squared minus 60k minus another 60k and then minus 6 times minus 6 and then be careful here, so those two together are minus 36, so that's going to give me minus 36 and then minus 36k squared. Um, so let's simplify that quadratic. So 100k squared minus 36k squared minus 120k. 36 minus 36 is cancelling. And then, so that's a quadratic inequality. Your safest bet might just be to put that into your calculator. So you have a quadratic, you have an inequality um, mode on your calculator. So that might be the the best way to, to make sure you get your inequality the correct way round. Um, otherwise, what am I going to do there? Well, I think I can take 8k out as a common factor, and that would give me 8k minus 15 in my brackets. So I'm just going to double check that on the calculator. I think I'm okay there. 120 divided by 8. Yep, I'm fine. Right. So what would that look like if I were to sketch it? Well, it would have roots at 0, so that's k, roots at 0 and 15 over 8. I want that to be greater than 0. So it would be those two end bits there. So it's when k is less than 0 or when k is greater than 15 over 8. Now, there is actually another mark available um, here. So if, if you got to that answer, you have got um, full marks. Um, but if you didn't get that answer, there is another, there's a B1 mark that's kind of implied within this working. And that is, if we go back to the original question, so find the range of values for K, well, actually, could write from the start say, well, k can't equal zero, because if k equals zero, we just wouldn't have a line. Now, if you get the full correct solution, that's a bit irrelevant, because k equals zero isn't included in our answer anyway. Um, but if you didn't have the fully correct solution, that there was a B1 mark available for that.